This chapter got even farther into the trip to the future. And honestly, given the pacing, I can see that it's not going to be as quick as we thought. But I'm not entirely sure how Toyo Taro on this monthly schedule will be able to complete the Trunks arc before the Universal Survival arc will start in the anime. And for anime fans, that means in order for that to happen, get ready for a lot more filler. Because that Krillin training arc is probably not going to be the last if that's the case. That or Toyotaro will just go back on that statement. Either way, Toyotaro continues with his take on the Trunks arc. Continuing with the, you know, revelation to the Z Fighters, we already know. But there is a Zamasu of Trunks' timeline because... Goku Black is the Zamasu from their original timeline before Beerus went through and erased that Zamasu, creating an, another timeline. And Zamasu, future Zamasu, found that out through looking at the new rings. And while he was doing that, on the other hand, apparently he was investigating other parallel worlds? So... Weird. It looks like that's something we won't be able to go farther in depth to, but it looks like the Zero Mortal Plan just got a teensy bit more confusing, but like I said, we're probably never going to go back, so just pass that up. That's probably not going to matter again. So, yeah. But the new parallel world is their own, ironically. So... There is one big topic that has gotten everyone bamboozled from this chapter. Even Geekdom made a video specifically on the revelation, which is Zenkai Boost, as the fandom knows it. In reality, there's not really a term, it's just as the chapter itself puts it, the trademark of the Saiyan race, which is to get stronger every time they come back from near death. Heck, they even try it out on Vegeta after they realize Goku Black just did it. And that is where the controversy comes in, with Trunks stating that because, you know, Vegeta and Goku have gotten so high up into their, you know, bodily limits, a Zenkai boost probably won't do it for them. I don't want to agree with that. As a long-time Dragon Ball fan, I would rather not have Zenkai Boost just written off like that. However, because of how the write-off was written, we could also just put it off on speculation, just like how old Kai thought the Portari earrings would keep Vegito fused forever originally. Ha! How'd that turn out? Of course, unlike that, there's not really any, you know a real need for that to be disproven sadly at least except for the fact that a fandom would be very very angry if that was not retconned immediately on the other hand there are other ways to look at it. like i said geekdom made a video about it and while i don't want to you know bite on his material i will admit that i somewhat agree with more of what they said in that video which was that you know the increases might not be as substantial as it was back when they did it in the Namek arc. Because where the Namek arc was, they were at, you know, levels below the millions, for example. And if a Zenkai boost, as they state, would be around like 300,000, which, you know, topping on every time Goku got a Zenkai boost he was eventually able to at least come close to Frieza, and then Super Saiyan put him over that. So, in order to get Goku and Vegeta up to the level that they needed to be, Zenkai boosts were more liberal in that sense. However, they were not brought up again. And while we could have easily speculated that Zenkai boosts were just a natural part of training, that was also not explicitly stated. And in the end, Zenkai boosts while it's not entirely sure if it's like a small increase or if it matters on how close they were to death or any outside, you know, things like that. I do agree with 
the overall statement that, you know, Geekdom and his pals in the video came up with, which would be that the Zenkai Boost probably lost their numerical significance when they surpassed the millions and went even further. Although Cells kind of, you know, goes against that, but Cells an amalgamation of different types of DNA, so he could very easily be the exception anyway. What I'm saying is Zenkai Poos may be obsolete, or they may not be. Maybe they just aren't as powerful for someone who is already so strong. Like who's, who's to say Vegeta didn't get just slightly stronger from that Zenkai boost? I mean, think about it. How else would he have gotten so much stronger just from training in the hyperbolic time chamber alone? Because it's not like he hasn't been training for years, literally. I mean, think about it. They train for years as if it's the only thing they do. It's not like just one day in the hyperbolic time chamber is enough. Probably with the... Uh, unique environment in there coupled with Zenkai boost would probably put someone substantially up but in the end you know Zenkai boosts aren't what they used to be on the other hand I could see how maybe say future trunks gets a Zenkai boost or so because he said his father and Vegeta father and Goku are the ones who have reached their limits not him himself he could still be ripe for Zenkai or at least to get up to Goku Black's level, which this chapter, you know, not to forget what we're actually talking about, Goku Black finally gets to Super Saiyan Rose. And Zamasu states that a god who has achieved a Saiyan's body and reached Super Saiyan Blue and has already have, you know, godly potential would become pink. Now, rather than a statement, that just sounds like a speculation on Zamasu's part because. Come on, what god would really take a Saiyan's body just for that? I mean, he even specifically stated he wouldn't because he wants his godly powers, which we got more in depth in this chapter, which included, you know, basically what we saw Supreme Kai do back in, like, the early Boost saga, the early Bobby saga, you know, back then when he was just freezing people and shit, like when he held Gohan down back during the tournament, stuff like that, or stuff that I didn't actually think he could do, like uh, teleport the B, the Sensus, away from Goku right into his hand. That was a neat trick, I didn't think someone could do that, but I do like how they actually referenced like Kabito and saying that people who serve Supreme Kai's are taught or bestowed with healing arts. So as someone who was once the, you know, student of Goasu, he can use those healing arts. Not entirely sure why Black can't do it for himself. Maybe you just can't heal yourself. I don't know. That, that would be pretty convenient if you could. Maybe Black lost those arts from taking on. I don't understand. Because maybe the divine powers have something to do with their actual race. That's actually a good point. It probably has something to do with their race. Not just their key, which was more or less carried over, but... Yeah. It's more or less their body. Their race. Their DNA. Kind of like how the Saiyans have their... Quote-unquote boosts. So. Aside from that, the reveal of Zamasu's immortality was used after Goku tried to spare his life, saying, You, you can go back... You don't have to do this. He just rips that friggin' thing out of his body. And for me, that was kind of an ironic symbolism. Because I saw other people get impaled in media yesterday. If you guys watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., there was a lot of impaling in that one. Um, not Actually, wait, there was some sexual impaling now that I think about it. I digress. Was there anything else I should have covered, per se... I know there was... No, that was still revolving around the parallel universes and the, uh, you know, second Zamasu, future Zamasu. Ah! Yes. One last part, which is that we finally get to the point where the Mafuba was, you know, shown, or at least mentioned. So they're going back to the Mafuba. Not sure if it's gonna 
take exactly the same, but I'm guessing that was in Toriyama's outline as well. Sometimes we have to think what was in Toriyama's outline and what wasn't, based on Toyotaro's take and Toei's take. But in the end, it seems like they're going to go back, grab the Mafuba, and then we'll come back, save Trunks. Hopefully he gets a Zenkai boost from all that. And I actually did like how that was why they had to leave Trunks, because... In the end, yes, the Saiyans could hide their power levels, but my, whose power level is probably abysmally low to begin with, couldn't lower hers. And Black noticed that and used instant transmission to get to her. And that's why Trunks stayed back in order to, you know, uh, save her life, I guess. Either way, I hope that we get to see, you know, Trunks get a Zenkai boost after they come back from the past. And uh, thank you guys for watching this. Uh, if you guys want to see the uh, Geekdom video I heavily mentioned for like three or four minutes, I'll put it in the description below and in the cards above so you guys can check that out and show him some support if you haven't already. If you guys are already watching a small time for like me, you guys should be definitely looking at the main man himself. And also, if you haven't supported me as well, Please do. We're getting close to 100 subscribers. Maybe one day I can get as big as Gigdom. <laughs> no, that, that's impossible. So I'll see you guys next time. Smalls out.